Hi, I'm David Hill with New York Habitat. Today we're going to discover the lovely district of Montmartre. Walking through its winding streets, you'll get the feeling that you're actually in a bohemian village on a hill way outside of Paris. But don't let that feeling fool you. Montmartre is tucked away in the north of the city just above Les Grands Boulevards and the Opéra. It was one of the last towns to be amalgamated into the 19th century Paris, allowing it to retain a village-like atmosphere. Since then, its gently rolling fields have been transformed into Paris's lovely bohemian center. Today, the village feel and the city influence live in harmony, making Montmartre one of the coolest and most curious districts of the city. This will be the first of a two-part series on this fantastic neighborhood. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll be notified when part two comes out in a few weeks. If you're arriving in Montmartre by Metro, be sure to take the stairs. The Metro station Abbesse is the deepest subway station in Paris. This is because Montmartre is the second highest point in the city after the Eiffel Tower. Montmartre, or the Mountain of the Martyrs, probably gets its name from the martyr Saint-Denis, considered the first bishop of Paris, who was beheaded here in the 3rd century AD by the Romans. In the 19th century, working-class Parisians and starving artists flocked to the area for the cheap housing and equally cheap wine. Thus, Montmartre became the playground of Paris with its lively cabarets and dance halls. You may wonder why I hadn't mentioned the Sacré-Cœur in speaking of the history of Montmartre. That is because this white dome church on the top of the hill is actually much younger than it looks and was the subject of much controversy when it was built. Only consecrated in 1914, the building of the church helped lead tourism to the city and especially to the area as the French flocked to see the church. However, not everyone was happy with the construction of a church in the middle of Montmartre. In fact, the day of its opening, the owner of the Moulin Rouge just down the hill, he came up crying, the devil, the devil. Of course, others there responded, actually the devil, my friend, is found in the Moulin Rouge. This is the Moulin Rouge, perhaps the most famous or rather infamous cabaret in the world. The red windmill was inspired by the 30 or so windmills that dotted Montmartre at the time it opened in 1889. The once ultra risque birthplace of the Can Can has now turned into a sort of tourist mecca. If you really want to absorb yourself in the culture and daily life of Montmartre, you'll want to forgo the hotel and book one of the many vacation rental apartments that New York Habitat has to offer in the area. There's no better way to truly enjoy your stay in Paris. While the cabaret at the Moulin Rouge was more for wealthy Parisian men, the Moulin de la Galette held parties in the garden for the locals to bring their sweethearts on the weekend. It was in this very garden, hidden behind the windmill, that the Impressionist artist Renoir painted his masterpiece, The Bal du Moulin de la Galette, which you can see on display at the Musée d'Orsay. While most of the cabarets down closer to the boulevards were full of dancing girls and well-off Parisians, the little Lapin Agile was the artist's hangout. This is where Picasso and his gang could be found, occasionally exchanging a painting for a pitcher of wine. Moumart continues to have a great nightlife buzz. If you're after a drink or two amongst the cool Montmartois, head to La Fourmi. If you're in the sparkling mood, check out Call Me Bubbles, a tiny but trendy champagne bar behind the Sacré-Cœur. If it's clubbing you're after, try the famous Folie Pigalle or the recently revived Bus Palladium with its live music or DJs, style changes depending on the night. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our tour of Montmartre. And of course, if I've missed any of your favorite corners of this little neighborhood, make sure you leave a message in the comment section below. 
And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be notified when part two comes out in a few weeks. In part two, we'll tackle the art history of Montmartre, as well as where to shop and where to eat. If you're planning a trip to Paris, do yourself a favor. Skip the boring hotel room and rent a furnished apartment through New York Habitat. Visit our website at nyhabitat.com. You're just a few clicks away from living like a real Montmartre. I'm David Hill with New York Habitat, and I certainly hope to see you soon in the City of Light.